Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop again. Mitch is behind the camera, fabricator, filmmaker. And there seems to be a lot going on in my shop. So we'll, we'll kind of get right into it. And I got, we'll do what's new. What's new is, is, is foot peg rubbers for the tiger cub. These came from somewhere. They came in the mail. They're quite nice. They got Triumph embossed on them in the rubber. And so I was working on the pegs because the pegs were kind of, of bent. So you can see here, that's where the pegs go like, like that. And this one here still doesn't, actually this, this is the one I'm having, having some trouble with. It doesn't want to fit properly. It doesn't mesh in there. So I'll show you what I did. I had the foot pegs on the frame because when the, when, the, when the foot pegs are mounted on the frame, I can put a ruler right across and then I really know if they're straight. I got the big torch on there and then at the end of each peg, I use this wrench. So if I take off this peg here, got the pegs on the frame and I can, I can heat, it, heat it where it's bent because I can see where it goes up or down. And then when I get that red hot, I move it how I want. So I got the, the pegs nice and straight. And then you can see the heat stains here. I heated here, here, and then this one, there was a lot of heat went into this peg here. Then after that, I bead blasted them and I saw how, how worn they were where they mounted. So I did some welding and I, I, I TIG welded them and I filed, I'm in the process of filing them all down so that they fit nicely there. So it gets a nice sharp edge and then they'll, they'll go into the spray booth. On the bike, I've got the heavy, heavyweight forks on here. So that took a little bit of, of work to make them fit properly. Got the handlebars the new handlebar clamps. This one still isn't quite done. And then I was looking at the bike last night and I was thinking, okay, it's, it's raised up a bit. So I've changed the, and the word that came to my mind is the stance of the bike. And I was thinking, well, I, I never knew that word until I started looking at, at Bike Exif. That's a website. It's E-X-I-F, maybe it's Exif, maybe it's Exif, I don't know. I think it comes out of Australia and they got a lot of custom bikes there. And a bunch of years ago, they talked about the stance of the bike. And so I always had that in the back of my mind, but never really quite understood what they were talking about. So I Googled last night. I went to, I looked up, 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 up stance and, and the dictionary term is a way of thinking about something, especially expressed in a publicly stated opinion. So that's what, what the dictionary says, but that doesn't really let you know about the stance of a motorcycle. So then I, I Googled stance of a motorcycle and that's to do with the seating position or the posture of the rider. Your shoulders should be stacked above your hips and slightly pushed back. So that's the riding position that still doesn't let you know about the stance of the motorcycle. So then I went to Bike Exif and I looked around and I found a CB550 Cafe Racer and they talk in the description. It's got a spot on stance. So what is what does that mean? I don't really know. So I hunted around some more and I found a, a Moto Guzzi that was, it was, it was customized in, in Japan. It's a V50 and the, the stance is tweaked. That's the word they use. So I read down some more and what they did to alter the stance is they lowered the forks 40 millimeters and they rate they lengthened they put longer shocks on by 40 millimeters so what they did basically was just they moved the whole bike like that they changed the stance now is that a good thing not necessarily because when you 
make the fork shorter, you lose a bunch of the travel. And so maybe that's a good thing, maybe it's not. It depends on the fork. When you put a longer shock on the back, it raises up the pivot of the swing arm. That's what some of the road racers do because they want more, more, more cornering clearance, but it affects the chain. It affects a few things. So it's not, that's not always a good thing either. So then I'm thinking about this bike. And so we actually measured how much longer these forks are over the, the shorter forks, 40 millimeters. It's exactly the same. So it's interesting that this is 40 millimeters and the bike that I just talked about, the Moto Guzzi, also 40 millimeters on both ends. When I look at, at, at Bike Exceef over the years, one of the things that really, really bugs me is they've got a custom bike, they've done the exhaust, the tank, the forks, they've done everything, and then they've got it in the sunlight, it's under the, the under the under the tree, the lighting's perfect, and under the side stand they've got a two by four because they've raised the bike up or put smaller wheels on or done something, but they didn't fix the side stand. So that's one of the things I want to do right now because the side stand was the right height with those other forks, but now, now we've altered the stance made it a bit like a chopper, even though these are stock forks on a cub, we're going to check the stand. That's next. So you can see here that that the bike leans quite a bit. Some people would say that's that's fine, but I'm gonna get a piece of half inch aluminum and I'm gonna put it underneath the stand and we'll see what happens. In my mind, I thought half inch might be the right amount, but we'll see. Let me get another piece of metal. So I got another piece of half inch here. So you can kind of tell by how much it goes over. So let's take out that. So this would be, this is one quarter. So this is lengthening the stand by three quarters of an inch. And I kind of like, I kind of like that angle there. When you park a bike, you're not always parking on a perfectly level. Sometimes the ground's a bit uneven or soft. So, okay. So upcoming video, we're going to make the stand three quarters of an inch longer. Okay. So we're going to do something else today. This is a frame, a bicycle frame. This belongs to Mitch. He built this in frame building 101. And there's a couple things going on. I'm sure he won't mind me showing you. He sprayed it with a spray bomb and look, we got a little bit of paint peeling off there. That looks like an issue to me. And when he took the frame apart, his seat post is stuck. So he's put some penetrating oil down there, but apparently that didn't work. So, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to leave the Tiger Cub alone for a little while and we're going to remove the seat post if we can. Hopefully we can. And then the frame is going to get bee blasted and primed. So, so that's where I, I met Mitch. I taught 65 frame building classes over nine and a half years and Mitch just got in there. I think he was in class number 63. That's what he tells me. So I believe him. Let's see if we can uh, take out the seat post. I got the bottom bracket cups in here to so hold it in the vise. That's what we do with bicycle frames. And it's 
pretty. Don't want to bend the seat really. Okay, so we're gonna apply some heat. We're gonna. I got WD, and the post probably goes down to about here somewhere. So we're gonna heat up this area here and see what happens. I've got a scraper, it's made out of a, a triangular file. And this is gonna stop a lot of smoke going into the shop. You can see this, this paint comes off pretty easy. I think that's a rental seat tube, isn't it? Yes. It's on the thin side. Putting on a larger tip so it heats up faster. Going from a zero tip to a number one. It does make a pretty big difference in the amount of heat that it puts out. So what we want to do is to heat the tube evenly. We don't want to hold the torch in one spot. That would not be good. So we keep the torch moving. And you'll see a little bit of paint start to smoke in a while. There we go, a little bit of smoke. Some of the penetrating oil burning off. Okay, we'll have a little, little look see. Mitch, you stuck it good. You stuck it really good. A typical mountain biker not making sure the seat post is well lubricated. It happens a lot. I bet if I check my frame, I might have a similar problem. That's why I'm not checking. So what this does is to heat up the tube a little bit and hopefully add a little bit of clearance. Although the aluminum inside is probably going to want to expand a bit faster, some of you might say. But heat sometimes helps. So we'll see what happens. Pretty tight. <laughs> Hot. It seems pretty stuck to me. What we've done is to take off the seat and we're going to hold the 
hold the top of the seat post in the vise. This is, we're heading to last resort here. That's kind of where we're at. Because it does not seem to want to come out. And this is quite, this, this whole area is quite warm now from all the heating. We might ruin the seat post, but we're trying to save a frame in a sense. Okay. So I wasn't strong enough just holding the seat. That's what was going on. So here we're going to put some WD down again. And because this is basically vertical, that should... What a pleasing noise. Mitch is happy about this, I feel. He's going, yeah, we're going to get it out. There we go, more smoke. Well, that's good. That was, that was a successful operation. Mitch was telling me he went online last night, YouTube, looking up people with stuck seat posts. And one guy couldn't get it out, so he cut it off and then he reamed the entire seat post out of the seat tube. That's kind of crazy, but maybe that's what you need to do sometimes. Okay, so we're going to get this washed up. We're going to do some bee blasting and then we're going to do some priming. We're going to be in the spray booth today. Thanks for stopping by. I thought I would tell you a few things about spray painting a bicycle frame. So first of all, you need to do some masking on the frame. And so what I have here, this is the mask for the seat tube. It's a, it's a piece of aluminum. It's got a little bit of a taper here so that when you put it in, it stops right, right about there because it's, it's on the taper. And then you need to mask off the water bottle bosses. So I have a whole whole container of just Allen screws and you can see it's got paint on it. So that's what keeps the paint from going down into the thread. You don't want that. And then you also have to mask off the bottom bracket because you don't want any paint going into the thread. So I made up a system here. It's aluminum. It got turned in the lathe. There's a a piece of eighth inch flat bar, a wing nut. So I put this in from this side here. It goes in on the left. And I'll show you why, why I have this. Okay, so the frame is gonna hang on the rack like that. And then when I'm, I'm painting it, it goes on the hook. So you see here, I've got two hand holds and I can hang it on the hook here, the head tube, and then I can take it off the head tube and see this hole here, I can hang it upside down because you need to be, you need to have access underneath. If you only have the frame one way, I've seen, I've seen people paint bicycle frames like this and they spray it and then on the bottom, they always miss because they can't see what they're doing underneath. So. That's why this system works pretty well. So the spray gun I use, it's a Graco. It's a, a detailed gun. It's used for the inside of car doors. 
when I learned to paint, I was working at Rocky Mountain. They needed a painter, so they, they asked me to paint, and I said, well, I don't know how to paint. And they said, well, we don't know anybody else. So I went out and I taught myself how to paint. When you when you're spraying, you want the gun to be maybe so far away. This is the fan. This is what opens up the spray like that, all fine. When I spray paint a bicycle frame, because the tubes are usually quite small, I don't have the fan open much at all. Maybe just a little bit, but mostly it's closed. So it's a quite, quite narrow. And then, and then this one, this knob here, it controls how much paint is coming out. So when you're, when you're getting ready to paint, it's a good idea to have a tube off to the side that you can practice on to get this more or less right. It's not easy spray painting a bicycle frame. I'm told it's a lot easier to learn how to spray paint a car. Because what happens is when you spray, you have to start and stop. And you want to stop at exactly the right spot. You don't want to go up up here, up farther or overlap because when you spray this tube here, you want to go to the corner so that it meets. If you're going over a bit and over a bit, you're going to get a run or a heavy spot. It's really crucial that you get the right amount of paint and that you're really accurate and you, and you don't go over the same spot more than what you want to do. So. Anyway, we're going to go into the spray booth. There's a lot to know about spray painting. It took me quite a while to learn how to be a, a good painter. And even now, I don't think I'm a great painter. I, I tell people that I'm a fabricator masquerading as a painter. But anyway, we're going to go into the booth. Mitch has his camera and he's going to film me spray painting. We're going to prime his frame today. That's the goal. So. Let's go.
Well, that's our episode for today. I hope you liked watching Mitch's frame get painted. Next episode, it's gonna be blue with a nice Imran clear coat on it. Mitch and I like coffee. If you were to buy us a few coffees, that would be perfect. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.